should you get a battery pack like one of these or a dual battery setup in your vehicle? I actually don't think there is a right or wrong answer and I actually run both of them in mine. So let me give you some things to consider before you make your decision. Batteries like these are marketed and sold using amp hours as the unit of capacity, where battery packs are sold using watt hours as their unit. And it can be a little confusing trying to compare them both, but thankfully with a little bit of math, you can do the conversion. To go from amp hours to watt hours, all you need to do is multiply by the voltage of the battery. So for this one, it's 12.8 volts and it's 200 amp hours. So I'd multiply 200 by 12.8, which gives me 2,560, had to think about that one for a second. To do things the other way around, so to go from watt hours to amp hours, you just divide by the voltage. But for this, throughout this whole video, I'm gonna talk about everything in watt hours because I think it's actually the better unit. Another thing to consider when comparing two is the depth of discharge, and that's how far you can run that battery down. So with things like these battery packs, usually they've got a depth of discharge of around 90 to 100%. One example is this Blue Eddy, it's 2,000 watt hours, but the depth of discharge charge is 90%, which means you're actually going to be able to use 1,800 of those watt hours. For a high capacity dual battery setup, people often go with something like this. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, and these usually have around a 98 to 100% depth of discharge. Another one that you see a lot of people using is AGM batteries, and those are a lot older technology and actually only have a 50% depth of discharge. Before even considering whether to go with dual battery or battery pack or even which battery pack to go with or which dual battery to go with, you need to consider how much power you need. Generally speaking, the more power you need, the more cost effective it is to go with a dual battery setup. If you're just charging some devices, you're running some fans in your tent, maybe have some LEDs powered in your tent, then something like this, somewhere around 200 to 300 watt hours will suit you just fine. So something like the Jackery 240, Jackery 300, Blue Eddy AC30, all of those will do great. And 300 watt hours will power a fridge for several days in mild conditions. However, if you're gonna be out in hot conditions, let's say you're out in the desert, then it is only just enough to power it overnight night. Uh, I'd actually recommend going a little further and getting closer to 500 watt hours for a fridge, especially if you're going to be in and out uh, and you are somewhere that's hot and you're putting drinks in that fridge to cool down because that really sucks the power. 500 watt hours is also enough to run a diesel heater or a propane heater overnight and you can plug the fridge into it too because if it's cold enough to run the heater your fridge is not going to be drawing much power. All the numbers I've given you are extremes, so those are the high ends of what I have found I've needed to run various things. But based on those numbers, you can figure out how much capacity you need. Obviously, if you're going to be running multiple things that I've mentioned, you need to add them together. And if you're going to be running things for extended periods of time without turning on the vehicle or charging the battery, then you're going to need more capacity for that. And to give you an idea of what I use in my Forerunner, I have a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is actually exactly half the capacity of this one so when you round it, it's about 1300 watt hours and in terms of running the fridge i can run it for about five days non-stop in the hottest weather but that's parked outside my house without me getting into the fridge and putting drinks into it all the time when i'm out on my trips i usually move every single night so it's charging up uh, the lowest i've ever got the battery overnight was 25 percent and that was after charging several drone batteries uh charged several camera batteries i was running the fridge all night i had my heated blankets all night and then when i got up in the morning I charged some batteries again, some more drone batteries. For my next vehicle, I will be switching to this. Uh, this is the Lion Core 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that was given to me by Electrovolt. And this is uh, about 2,500 watt hours. Uh, so it's a lot of power. It gives me, you know, I use a lot of power when I'm out, mainly it's the drone batteries, uh, but it just gives me a little bit more leeway. You can get started with a battery pack like this from Jackery or the equivalent from Rock Pals, uh, Blue Eddy, Goal Zero, EcoFlow, you know, there's tons of these brands. They all basically do the same thing and they all cost a few hundred dollars to get started. And for that price, you can charge your accessories, you can run lights, run fans, uh, maybe even power a fridge overnight. But in terms of cost per watt hour, you usually get more for your money when you go with a dual battery setup. Yeah, it's gonna cost you a lot more up front, but you do get a lot more power. It's gonna last a lot longer. What that means is if you don't need a ton of power, then something like the Jackery 240 or the Jackery 500 
is going to be a great option. If, however, you do need a lot of power and you are charging things or you're running things for extended periods of time, then a dual battery setup is usually the better choice. In my opinion, if your budget's less than around seven to eight hundred dollars, then going with a battery pack is a great option. However, if you're spending more than around a thousand dollars, I think you're better off going with the dual battery setup. If you're somewhere in the middle, between like $700 and $1,000, then you could go either way. Just consider some of the other pros and cons and what you need. This is where a dual battery pack really wins. You pay your money, you get everything you need all in one case, ready to go. You just plug stuff in. The dual battery, on the other hand, it can appear very intimidating. You are definitely going to have to put some work into it. It's going to take some time and some effort. That being said, it is a little simpler than people realize. Uh, for I have this. This is used to charge it. This is Redox BCDC 1225D. This will charge this from the vehicle's alternator and from solar. And all it really involves is just hooking up four wires. If you want to learn a little bit more about this, uh, I'll put a link to a video in the description that shows some of the steps involved in hooking this up. And I'll put a link to their instruction manual as well. That way you can see what's involved. If you really don't know where to get started on the whole dual battery setup, you've got plenty of people that can help. Uh, I'll put a link to my website where I've got some suggestions of uh, batteries and chargers you go with. Uh, Red Arc has a calculator on their website. You can actually call them too and they'll tell you kind of the charging side of things. Uh, or if you just don't want to deal with any of that stuff, you can talk to my friends at Overland Power Solutions. They actually sell a kit that has everything you need from the chargers, the batteries, all the way down to the wires, the connectors, the shrink wrap. And they actually, if you're close to East Tennessee, they do the installs like they did on mine. With a battery pack, you obviously have a bunch of outputs on the front, but you are limited to what you see. The great thing about a dual battery setup is it's completely customizable. You can add as much or as little as you need. So for example, with mine, I think I have six USB outputs because I've got all those camera batteries that I'm constantly charging. I've got two 12 volt outputs. And if that's ever not enough, I can just wire up another one. Whereas with something like the Jackery or with any of these, what you see is what you get. I can't add any more USB outputs. And with this one, you know, I'm only limited to two. That's not enough. One of the best things about a battery pack is its portability. I can pick it up and I can take it anywhere I need. That's great and that's why I still carry these, why I still take them with me. I actually use them with the cameras. I plug them in. If I'm doing a time lapse overnight, I can leave the camera plugged in so it's not going to die. Or if I've got friends coming camping with me, I will just hand them one of these and they can use it to charge their phones or whatever else they need in their tent. If you have something like this, which is the Blue Eddy AC200P, you can actually use this in the house to run appliances. So let's say your power goes out. Earlier this year, we had a bunch of ice storms. Lately, we've had some hurricanes in the south. If your power goes out, you can run stuff like your kitchen fridge off this. I can still do that with the dual battery setup. I just need a really long extension cord. The downside to the large battery packs with a big capacity is that they are enormous. Just look at the size of this AC200P. This thing weighs 60 pounds. Uh, I also had the Jackery 1000, which had half the capacity of this, and it was also enormous. And I found that putting them in my vehicle just took up entirely too much space. And when you compare these two batteries here, this one's got a greater capacity, so this one's more than 2,500 watt hours compared to about 2,000 on this one, yet this is the smaller battery. Now, I'm not going to pretend it's small because it's not, but it could still go down the back of my drawer system or down the side of my drawer system. Uh, I could put it under a seat in the back. I could put it in front of the seats in the back. I've got lots of options to tuck it away, hide it away, and then run power to and from it as I need. And that's what the setup I have at the moment is. It's got a 100 amp hour battery in the back of the Forerunner and it's tucked down the side of my drawer system in some unusable space. I then have the wires come up and I've got plugs along the top of the drawers. This is the biggest weakness with the battery packs. They can take a long time to charge. Even from the wall or from solar, they can be pretty slow, but charging from 12 volt can take forever, especially with something like this. You might as well forget about charging from 12 volt for the uh, larger battery packs. Depending on the pack you get, the solar isn't a whole lot better. So the Jackery 500 and the Jackery 1000 both take about eight hours of sunlight to fully charge. The Jackery 500 takes 65 watts of solar. The Jackery 1000 takes 125 
25 watts of solar. But when you compare it to something like this, which is Redox's smallest charger, this takes 375 watts of solar to charge your second battery. So there's a huge difference between the two. In my Forerunner, I have Redox Manager 30, and that can fully charge my 1,300 watt hour battery from the wall, from up to 520 watts of solar, uh, or from the vehicle's alternator in just over three hours. To put that in perspective, on my last trip, I fully charged that 1,300 watt hour battery from 25% to 100% in less than three hours. And while it was charging, I had this plugged into it on an inverter and it was still, this Jackery 240 with 240 watt hours was still not charged when I got to camp five hours later. Now that being said, not all battery packs do have terrible charge times. Blue Eddy in particular have come out with several, including this one that charged really quickly from the wall and from solar. Uh, this one my buddy uses extensively. He charges up really quickly from solar while he's out on trips, but it still falls behind in 12 volt charging. When picking a battery, take a look at the chemistry of it. Now these days, in my opinion, lithium really is the way to go. There's so many advantages over AGM, but not all lithium batteries are created equally. The best is lithium iron phosphate, which has this abbreviation. And it's the best because it has such a good life. You're looking at around 10 years, thousands of cycles out of it. And actually these ones from Electrovolt, these have a 12 year warranty. On the other hand, with a few exceptions, the battery packs usually have lithium NMC batteries in them. And that's great because it's more energy dense, which means you get a smaller battery that's lighter, but it also has some downsides. One of those being that the life is a lot shorter. You're looking at around 500 cycles versus the thousands with lithium iron phosphate. Of course, after 500 cycles, they don't become useless and you just throw them away, but they have a significantly reduced capacity. And that's one of the reasons why I would never spend thousands of dollars on one of these. When you look at Jackery's 1500 or Goal Zero's 1500X or any of the more expensive models, they're really expensive and you get something that's going to have a significantly reduced capacity after just 500 uses. Uh, so, you know, for that kind of money, you probably want something that's going to last a little longer. And if you do decide that a battery pack is right for you and you want something with a high capacity, make sure you get one with lithium iron phosphate battery in it. Blue Eddy make a couple. One of them is this one, the AC200P, uh, and I'll put links to both of them in the description. So which one should you get? Well, obviously I've given you a lot of things to consider, but in my opinion, you could simplify it down to, if you don't need a ton of power and you wanna spend less than about $800, then there's nothing wrong with getting a battery pack like these. However, if you need a large amount of power, you're running things for extended periods of time, uh, or you're looking to spend more than $1,000, dual battery is probably the way to go. If you want to see my setup or some suggested setups, then go to my website at revereoverland.com forward slash power, or you can watch the video that I did with Overland Power Solutions, and I'll put links to both of those in the description. Uh, I'll also put contact information for Overland Power Solutions. That way, if you want to contact them, uh, get a kit from them, that you can easily do that. Uh, and I'll put some links to some suggested battery packs in the description as well. Thanks for watching.